Welcome to Base Talk with Hagen and Hayes. Today's topic is the travails of travel. So, Susan, tell me about your problems traveling with a base. Well, David, my problems traveling with a base actually reminds me of something you were just talking about before we started to record. <laughs> a lot of times when I travel with a base, I am fortunate enough to be traveling with the Boston Symphony or the Boston Pops, and they do handle the base for us. You put it in a trunk, and they ship it, and they see it off, and then you just see it at the hall. However, it's not always that easy, is it? <laughs> no, it isn't. It, it's, uh, yeah, I, I enjoy traveling with the base, but it is stressful. Um, and and of, often the difficult thing is getting from the car park to the airport with the, yes. the flight case. Um, because yes. you can't really take it on one of the, the, the buses. Um, so right. I have to drop Sarah at the, the airport with the base, and I have to go and find the car park. Then I have to get a bus back. Then we mm -hmm. have to go into the airport. Then we have to check in. Um, and you can see the looks on the, the girls' faces the uh, at the desks. They can mm -hmm. see this big base, and they haven't checked one in for, I don't know, four years, and they've forgotten how to do it. And they're just thinking, please, please don't come to me. Don't go always oh, coming to me. And then... <laughs> But they're always really lovely and helpful. Um, but then often you have to take it underneath um, for security. So I get the base out and uh, they check there's nothing in there. Often they do drugs che checks as well in the, the flight case. Um, and then you close the, the case up and then you're free. And then you're worried about what's happening to your base. Exactly. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but it's, it's really, really stressful traveling with the base, I have to say. Um, but touch wood. It's, it's only gone wrong once for me. How about you? Well, you know, I've been really fortunate in that when I've traveled with the base and dealing with it myself, <laughs> yeah, knock on wood, uh, nothing has gone wrong. The hardest thing is mm. getting it, uh, convincing the people at the desk to let it on the plane. Um, yes. I remember being in Texas and having to explain that it was a bass fiddle because mm -hmm. they didn't know what a double bass was or a string bass. And so the mm -hmm. guy said, oh, bass fiddle. Yeah, one of my friends plays that in our folk band. And I was like, okay, yes, it's that. Um, someone else asked if it was a cello. And I thought, do I say it's a cello and have it go on as listed as a cello? And then if something happens and they're like, but you said it was a cello. And I was like, um, it's a little bigger than a cello. And they're like, okay, I'm just, it's fine. Um, but like, there's that dilemma of what do you call it? Because sometimes, depending on the airline here in the states, they're listed differently as to what it, you call it, and then what the upcharge is. I once flew to to uh, Belfast with a base, mm -hmm. and I got to the check in, and the, the lady said, "I'll just phone someone to come and get the base," and she said, "Oh, there's a cello here to be collected," and I said, "No, it's not cello. The base." She said, "Oh no, don't tell them it's a base. They don't know what a base is." But mm. they do know what a cello is, and they know a cello is valuable. So they'll really okay. look after it. And I thought, wow, that's really good advice. So if they that is good cello, advice. Go with it. It's a cello. And mm. that's what people ask walking down the street, is that a cello? And I always say, close, it's a bass, but I think I'll just say yes. <laughs> I think at Stansted Airport, I think there's a um, an X-ray, um, mm. and you have to put the, the bass in the flight case, and it goes through the X-ray. Okay. Um, and then it goes down a, a chute. Oh, it, yes. But I, I think it's a, a conveyor belt rather than a chute. Okay. Uh, but it does go down. Mm -hmm. and, and I'm always so, so terrified of just seeing the base there. Oh, yeah. And then sometimes, yeah. sometimes, you know, you're sitting waiting to get on the plane and you can see your plane and you can see all the luggage coming. Yes. You your base on one and of And then the... you feel it come into the plane. Yeah. And I don't look. Because I, I, don't I, I don't want to know. I don't want, I'm, no. I'm trusting that everybody knows their job and right. everything will be fine. And it's been fine apart from once. So yeah. I think I've been very lucky, really. Uh, the very first time I flew with my base, um, I, I had my dad come with me. Actually, a lot of the times that I have my dad come with me, just have a second set of hands uh, oh. in case things became unwieldy and, you know, a suitcase and a base. And, you know, so he, he came with me and, we're sitting on the plane and they're loading the luggage and I felt the plane just dip down like <laughs> whoop. And I looked at my dad and I said, please tell me that wasn't my base. And he said, okay, it wasn't your base. I said, are you lying? And he said, oh, like a rug. And 
oh, the whole flight, it was like a six hour flight. My stomach was in knots mm. and I just thought, oh my God, I'm going to toss my cookies. This is just awful. And I expected to land and to open the base trunk and to have it be in like 5,000 pieces. And it was absolutely fine. And I thought, yeah. that's why the trunks have the padding and the cushion and the airbags and all yeah. that. But mm. Oh, it's not a good feeling. I, so now I don't look and I try not to pay attention to when the plane makes that, you know, <laughs> identifiable dip down, you know, that's when they toss the base in. One of the things for me that I like to make sure, and I make a list for this because I'm kind of a list person, the supplies that I need to bring, right? Mm. It's not just my base and my bow. And I always make sure I have my end pin because that's one of my middle of the night fears. But you know, my rosin and my tuner and my rags. And do I need to bring a rock stop or an anchor uh, in case I'm playing somewhere that has a slippery floor? Um, although I do have an end pin that has a carbide tip, which is like, well, mm. basically it'll stab into anything, but it don't want to stab into like a beautiful church mm. floor or something yes. like that. So I do try to bring mm. things, but I make a list. I don't know if you do this too. I make a list so that I don't forget my base supplies, basically. I I think I don't make a list because I always kept, keep everything together. So yeah. I always have everything all the time. I've started taking two bows with me now. I, I do never, too. Yeah, I never used to. I was always, always presumed everything was going to be okay. And right. just, I think just since lockdown, I've just just started taking two bows. I'm just a little bit more cautious because I, yeah. one thing I always say to my students is if it can go wrong, it will go wrong. <laughs> right. and, and I just think, right, yeah, so I, I do take two bows now. That's the yeah. I think it's the only thing I've changed. We, we I... were once flying with, I flew with Carrado Canonici, Italian bass player. We were playing in Ancona in northern Italy and we flew and we took two bases on the same flight. Mm. Um, and it was amazing. I think it was something like twenty dollars each way they didn't charge us for the base it was oh nice amazing. and we got to anchor at a tiny little airport and so we we're standing there waiting for someone to bring out the bases and they didn't they put them on the carousel oh and so the, the things came out of the carousel and you know when you, you pick up the base there's a lot of of weight there and yes. you pick it up and it just goes whoosh and if there's anyone standing to your side oh yeah you've got to hit them in no yes. terms, and there were two we had two bases, and it was a very tiny carousel. And if we didn't get them quickly enough, it would have gone back round again. So we had <gasps> right. To, oh, it's oh, it's so stressful. Always, always. Yeah, yeah. That's the one thing is, I think every time I've done it, it, it there is a level of stress that comes mm. with it that it's not really my favorite feeling in, in the world. But it's you know, knowing where where to take the base. And yes. where, where are they going to leave it when you get there? Yes. Because it's never where you expect it to be. No, no. Um, and, and sometimes they just put it at the side of the, uh, by a wall or something. And they walk right. away. And you they have walk to away. know where the place is. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And some, some airports will have like a very organized, here's where the oversized mm. luggage is. And you, you go and you see surfboards and golf clubs and all kinds of, you know, more athletic things. And then, and then there's a base plopped in the middle of it all. <laughs> But some places you just have no clue where it's going to end up. And that's, you know. Something where you had to, I think it was 32 kilos or something like that. We had to, I think that was the maximum. And uh, I would always say, so. Oh, I think it's only only about 28 kilos. Knowing yeah. full well, it was about 35. And, right. And I, I got away with that, I think, so many times. And then just occasionally they would say, well, there's there's some scales over there. Could you go and weigh it? Oh, I hate I, when I they do that. do that. It'll be fine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I remember the first time I flew, um, I was still in, in college and, and my teacher said, mm. just tell them it's 90 pounds, tell yes. them it's a cello and keep it on the far side of the room when you go to check in so that yes. they don't see it up close and they don't know how big it really is. And I remember thinking, that's a lot of lying. I don't know if I can actually do that without like my whole face twitching. And so I tried it and they did, they said, okay, great, but we're going to weigh it anyway. And I was like, oh dear God. And I think they charged me $150 extra. Mm. But on the way home, I was in Texas and they had, it was the bass fiddle and they were like, oh, my best friend plays bass fiddle. So he let me on for free. And so I thought, okay, well, then it evens out to being not that bad for the, for the round trip. Um, yeah. But I think sometimes it just depends on the agent that you get, um, yeah, their is, understanding of the rules and their kindness. 
Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Years ago, yeah. I, I took some of my students to Copenhagen. Mm. Um, I was working with, with Meta Hanskoff in, in Denmark. And um, there'd been a, um, a fire at one of the, I think, the car parks in the airport, so part of it was closed. Okay. Uh, so we, we managed to miss our, oh, the students couldn't get there. So we, we I waited and missed the flight. So Sarah mm. went and I put the, the base on the flight with her. Yeah. So and it was a, a, a base case which didn't have wheels. Oh. So you had to pick it up and put it on a trolley and yes. then bring the trolley back. So balance it oh. um, so you could see in front of the, um, oh. the flight case. Yes, yes. And I bet she loved that. <laughs> she did. And she, she was struggling to uh, to do that. And a man came to help her. And, okay. uh, and he said, is this your base? And she said, no. And it's my husband's. And he said, do you know what I would do? I would divorce him. Oh. <laughs> and I thought that's the best advice she's ever been given. She, and yet she didn't take it, which is a good she thing. Didn't, she didn't. <laughs> it's very long suffering, I have to say. <laughs> but it is so nice just occasionally, you know, when you fly, you don't have a base. I always right. feel like I've forgotten something or I've, I've, oh, I've yeah. lost something or I've left something behind. So it's, yeah. it's really nice. But it is nice to fly without a base, I have to say. It is. There have been a lot of times when I've flown places and I'm going somewhere to play, but there's mm. a base there and it's a good base and I know it's mm. a, a reliable situation. Um, when I would go out to the Utah Symphony to sub with them, there mm. were people there that would say, oh, don't bring your base, just come use one of ours. And one of the women there had this beautiful old Italian instrument and she'd be like, I'll let you use my Italian base for the, for the weeks that you're mm. here. And I was like, oh my God. And one of the other guys had a base, an RV. I have two RVs. And so he was like, use my RV. It's just like yours. There's no yes. adjustments needed. And I was like, oh, well, that's mm -hmm. convenient. Um, which is a, a nice situation when I know that I can, you know, utilize that. Um, and then when I travel and it's not actually music related, I'm like a vacation or something. I'm checking in the back seat of the car, like, where is all my stuff? I just have a suitcase. Um, but you know, that brings me to another point. Sometimes I'll opt to drive, even if it's quite a distance, mm -hmm. um, just to not have the stress of flying. So I basically, my rule of thumb is if it's east of the Mississippi River, I'll drive. Um, whether it's, you know, going down south or heading west. Um, mm. uh, you know, I'd rather take two days or three days and drive somewhere if I have to. Um, it's usually less expensive, honestly, mm. than the flight and the potential overcharge for the base and a car rental when you get there and all that sort of stuff. I'm like, you know what? I'll just drive. It's mm. fine. I love drive. I actually love driving. Um, when I <laughs> When I turned eight, um, it was my birthday and I just started crying and my mom's thinking, oh God, what's wrong with this kid? And she's like, why are you crying? I said, well, I'm eight. And she's like, yeah. And she's thinking I was like having some like old age crisis at age eight. And I said, well, I can't drive until I'm 16. That's like a whole other eight years. I'm only halfway there. I can't stand the wait because I just couldn't wait to drive. Um, and, but I still love driving. And so if I've got to drive somewhere, I don't mind doing that. And it's sometimes fun to see parts of the mm. country that I haven't been to. It's really neat. I, um, I agree. I, I enjoy driving. I, I did some concerts and workshops in Scotland. We we live in Somerset, which is, is quite south. Yeah. And I was up in Glasgow and Edinburgh and Perth, I think. And uh, Sarah couldn't come with me, so I, I drove. And I think... It, I, I can't remember, eight, hour, eight hours of driving, which I know for you is nothing. It's quite yeah. a long, long way for us. But I sure. had, in the olden days, I had a CD player in my car. Oh, yeah. And uh, yeah, I was so happy with that. And I had the ring cycle. And going up one side of Britain and down the other side, I got through all, I think it's 21 CDs. Oh, wow. So I listened to the entire ring cycle. That's um, amazing. And, yeah, it was really fantastic. I absolutely loved it. And it, it's also nice to have your own car when you arrive yeah yeah i like that that's that's was, definitely a convenience I, I was working with may halliburton and she she's a, a freelance bass player in, in scotland teacher she's lovely yeah. I've got her for, she's for many, so many sweet years. i love her and i was staying in her, her apartment and we'd, we'd done a workshop and she said just follow me and so i, I was following her car and then I, I think I, I was listening to the ring cycle <laughs> and the next thing, and I knew she had a red car. And the next thing I knew, I was following this red car 
and I'd got my sat nav on, and it, it was taking me in a different direction. <laughs> and it took me about three miles to work out it wasn't me. I was following somebody else. <laughs> I don't know where I ended up in, in Edinburgh. I had to phone it because I think I had the key to get into her apartment or something like that. Oh, jeez. I, I had to phone. I'm so sorry, mate. I'm so sorry. I, I've got to try to get you that. But because of sat nav, at least it's easy, isn't it? You, that you is just, such, it, yeah, that's such right, an improvement. Just, you know, code in it, it takes us back. But it's so right. funny. I, I was listening. I was loving the ring cycle. And I just, <laughs> I just lost concentration. And she said she saw me driving past her. She saw me. <laughs> So this Volvo going past, and she's like, oh. I it. and it was. <laughs> <laughs> that is so funny. I did that once as a kid in a store. I was with my mom, and we were shopping, and and she was wearing, you know, like a, a tan raincoat, mm. and I followed the tan raincoat. And she stopped, and then I found another tan raincoat, thinking it was my mom, and following her. And then after a while, I looked up, and I saw it wasn't my mom, and I just started crying. I was like, or maybe I screamed. I don't even remember. I made some weird sound, and the woman was like, oh, my God, who are you? And I was like, where's my mother? <laughs> and so that's when I realized if you follow someone, you need more than just the color. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. So I, oh I think God. I've flown to, I don't know, maybe about 20 countries with a base. Mm. Um, because if if you play solo repertoire, you need to know what bass you're going to be playing on. Mm -hmm. it's, it's not just a bass with four strings. That right. That, you're trying to play Botticini on a. No, you can't do that. Bass. No, it, it's I, I I like to know what I'm playing. Um, right. But it, it does add to the stress factor. I have to sure. say. It does. Yeah, for sure. Mm. What is one of the easiest places that you've flown in and out of? I think most of them, I, I think the worst, if I'm honest, is America. Sorry. <laughs> I believe it. No, no. We have with, a lot of challenges with Yeah, with, with America, um, often the airlines get you twice. Uh, once mm -hmm. because it's it's too big and once yep. because it's too heavy. So you pay yep. twice. Right. Um, right. But with, with British Airways, it's, it's um, usually, if I can, I'll go with British Airways because they yeah. have a really good uh, policy for bases. And I, I think That's on their good. website, it does... Uh, specify that they carry bases yeah uh, and in the old we, days you know easyjet and a ryanair which is a small mm, yeah, airlines, yeah they would take bases and then they they started adding uh you had to pay so much per kilo and then it started getting really expensive um yeah yeah so it, i think most of the airlines i have to say have been really good that's uh, good i i don't think i can't think of any of them being bad and and also you know the the people you deal with the ladies at the desks are really helpful. Um, That's good. <laughs> we, we, we were once at, the, at Heathrow, um, and, you know, there's always a line queuing up to go sure, to, yeah. to check in. And we were right at the back of this long snaking queue, mm -hmm. and someone from the airline came and took us right to the front of the queue. Oh, um, nice. Just to get rid of us. I think it was much Yeah, easier. sure. Yeah, yeah, well, that's great, though. <laughs> I'll so take just, it. Just, so just occasionally, you, you do yeah. get really fantastic service. When that's you, nice yeah it's nice yeah um, yeah i've i've noticed in the states it really varies from airline to airline mm -hmm. um some people just love southwest air they said mm -hmm. they get you know great treatment with it um i think i used to fly delta a lot for and then after a while their policies changed and mm -hmm. you know i go online now and i check the most current cost for a base yes. and then i print it out Mm -hmm. And I bring that to the check-in counter and I keep it in my pocket. I don't show it to them at first, just in case they're going to give me a better deal than it says on their website. <laughs> I'm not going to say, oh no, let me pay more. But if they're going to charge me more than what it says, then I'll pull that out and say, oh, well, this is what your website says. And the other thing is, um, in America, sometimes they'll try to say, oh, you can't take that on the plane, even as checked luggage. Yes. But we have, um, the American Federation of Musicians mm. has gone to Congress and had a letter written up that says, yes, you are allowed to check a musical instrument. And so it lists them and it's got all sorts of details. And so I also keep that with me just in case mm -hmm. I find that the agents at the checking counter, they all seem to have different information. And you can get someone who's 
nice and knowledgeable. You can get someone who's kind of grumpy and not knowledgeable or a mixture of any of those. And it kind of just depends mm -hmm. on who you get. So I'm always of the camp of go, go prepared with as much information as you need to have with you, but don't show it to them first. Let them, you know, kind of <laughs> just in case they're going to be extra nice to you. Um, Cause I've been waved through without being charged a fee at all. Um, and then there was a time when they tried to charge me, like, I think it was almost triple what their website said. And I, and I very politely said, mm. Ooh, you know, I think that that might be more than what your mm. website says here. I printed it out and you know, I, tr I don't, I don't want to fight with anyone and I don't want to be, you know, that you catch more flies with honey than vinegar. So you don't want to be rude or pushy mm. in like a, an aggressive way. So I try to be polite about it. And then if it doesn't work, I say, well, is there someone like a manager that I could speak with? Cause I mm. think I really am going to need some help with this. Um, and not in the, <laughs> I've heard people say, I need to talk to your manager. I'm like, Ooh, that's not going to make anybody like you. So I do think delivery has something to do with it too. I, I think but, I've been very lucky because all the, the check-in people have been fantastic. That's but, good. But I, I try and go with the attitude of they're doing their job, I'm doing mine. Yeah. Let's try and make this work together. Um, yep. And I have more knowledge about, about this than they do because they don't check in bases every right. week of the year. So it's it's yeah. quite quite rare they do it. Um, yeah. So I, I, I try and be helpful if, if, you know, sometimes they need information. Sometimes they'll phone a supervisor for more yep. information. But they, yep. they're really usually very helpful. Um and and I think sometimes it's it's nice for them to have something else to do rather than just checking in ordinary luggage. It's oh, something right. that's interesting. I love making the the little joke and saying, see, you're gonna get to go home with a new a new story tonight. <laughs> <laughs> Guess what I checked today, you know? Um, but yeah, I, and that's the thing. They really they are just trying to do their job and they may not have ever seen a base before. So you have to be mm -hmm willing to work with them you're right it's a good it's way just to a look it. of horror on their face when they see you oh yeah every they, time yeah it, every it's time. so so funny and i always the, apologize i say i'm so sorry i'm so sorry <laughs> <laughs> the only time i think they don't look horrified um they look exhausted when there's like an audition or mm. a convention in a town and they're getting boatloads of bass yes. players coming yeah. through and by the end of it all they're like oh god another one Oh, I just want a vacation. You know, you see that look on their faces and I say, bet you've seen a lot of these this week. <laughs> <laughs> but um, yeah, and you know, I think it can be nerve wracking to, mm -hmm. to fly, but I think if you stay organized, stay calm, um, and just be like your attitude of just willing to work with whoever is at the ticket counter, it, it works and you know you hear horror stories of oh my base was damaged my base was broken my base was lost but if you think about how many instruments fly yes mm. you know it, it it's not I, you just don't want it to happen to you no what was your one bad time that was, we flew to spain i was i was working with simon garcia and mm -hmm. i I, we, I think we arrived late at night and I, I picked up the base and, and I think we were collected and, and went to the airport, uh, to the hotel. And I just put the, the base in the, the storage. Uh, so I didn't look at it because I usually get the base out and look, I didn't. Right. Uh, so I went down the next morning and opened the, the case and the neck had come out of the base. <gasps> yeah. Mm -hmm. And I and I kept closing the, the, the case and then opening it. <laughs> <laughs> Hoping it would be different. Exactly. And sadly, <laughs> it wasn't. Sadly, it wasn't. And it was, oh. Oh, I couldn't believe it. But fortunately, uh, Diego Zekeres had quite a few bases. Oh, uh, sure. So I was able to go and, and borrow one of his. Oh, um, good. And so I was able to play. But it's it's not the same. It's really no, not the same. no. And when you're playing solo stuff, like you said, you mm. really need to feel very comfortable getting all over the fingerboard. And well, it, it's also you know, it's a D neck, it's an E flat neck. Right. Where's the F sharp? You yeah, know, it, 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 yeah. They they make a difference in the size of the shoulders. Um, mm -hmm. You know, and it, even like the tone. Mm -hmm. You know, how do I use the bow on this bass? You yes. know, it takes it takes mm -hmm. adjusting to to deal with that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, that's it's a tough thing. In America, they say, and this is good for you mm -hmm. to know when you get here in April, mm -hmm. which I'm so excited about. Um, <laughs> check it at the airport 
because if anything goes wrong, they need to know right then for insurance purposes. Mm -hmm. And if you leave the airport, they're going to think that it happened after you left the airport. Mm -hmm. They'll try to be like, oh, we're not responsible. So you check yeah. it right there at, you know, when you get it and um, mm -hmm. it's much better. It's, you know, just God forbid. And again, knock on wood, but mm -hmm. most of the time things do come through okay. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I think being early also helps when you get to the airport to check in. Have you found that? Completely, yeah. yeah. With a base, always get there yes. a good couple of hours early and, and yeah. be the first in the queue to, to check in. Right. Um, because, you know, an ordinary person might take two or three minutes to check in. Mm -hmm. We're going to be 10, could be 15 minutes. Right, um, right. And so you don't want to feel stressed yeah, for time but, and you don't want yeah. the agent to rush it. And then, you know, the luggage handlers come and get in like, oh, we've got to get to the plane quickly. That's when mistakes happen, I think, a lot of times. And usually the, with uh, customs and things and also uh, security checks, uh, right. many, many times I've had to go to underneath the airport to, to yep. where the, the, the things are stored and take the base out. and. Yeah. It's better it. when they let you take it out too. Exactly, because I'm you know, like you. We we know you how to do. take it out safely and how to put it back yeah. safely. And, yeah. You know, there was there was a time right after nine eleven um, here in the states. They once they took it, you couldn't go anywhere. You know, beyond mm -hmm. the the, mm -hmm. the little red line and yes. people's instruments. You know, people were opening them and putting them back wrong and all that sort of stuff. And and the owners of the instruments were begging please let me come and help and sometimes you'd get nice people that would say okay you know we'll check it up here um because mm -hmm. you're not allowed downstairs or or yes. whatever but um i've heard mixed reports but it seems like a lot of places are a lot more flexible now letting mm -hmm. musicians stay with their instrument for the security check um but the secret really is get a job in an orchestra <laughs> it is because they do it all for you yeah you just get on the plane and you have yeah few glasses of wine and you get off the other right. end um you i'll go to tell the hotel, you have a nice dinner and the next morning your base is waiting for you in the concert hall totally in fact i just was in japan with the boston pops in october and so you have to let the base out of your position possession a couple days early hmm. but our crew hmm. uh, brought it all from boston to chicago on a truck then they had it all go through security checks. They palletize it. They wrap it. It was, you know, several pallets because it was all the basses and cellos, actually almost all the instruments. Um, and they palletized it and wrapped it. And then they flew from Chicago to Tokyo. And then they took it off the plane. Our guys took it off the plane. And they brought it to the hall. And it's just sitting there in the hall and i tell you i got there, you know i'm the nerd that got there early to make <laughs> sure i want to make sure my base is fine and if it needs any love i'll have time so you know they were <laughs> the orchestra said all right so the buses leave to get to the venue um an hour before the rehearsal and i was like mm -mm, that's not gonna happen so i said to the base section you know we were staying in tokyo the concert was in tokyo yes tokyo's big but there's a wonderful train system yes. so i said to my colleagues in the base section uh, as principal i didn't want them to think i was being bossy mm. um but i said to them i'm gonna go early just to check on my base if anyone wants to come with me you're welcome to it's mm. very it's a very easy 10 minute train ride i said if you're going earlier or later or want to do your own thing that's totally fine i just want to offer the opportunity i think the whole section actually ended up meandering over together all but one mm. and we went like i don't know two or three hours earlier just in case and it was nice to be together because if someone's yes. sound post had fallen or bridge had fallen or something was wonky we could help each other you know but all the bases came through fine i think part of it is because our guys literally were our crew handled them and i thought this is cushy <laughs> <laughs> you, you realized you realized yes i did <laughs> i did we were so fortunate um but i think you know for me making a checklist helps mm -hmm. ease the potential worry of you know waking up at three in the morning thinking oh, did i pack this or oh i better not forget to bring that so for list makers make a list um <laughs> for those of you that aren't list makers just pack everything up slowly enough so that you're not rushing through it mm -hmm. um you know doing it early getting to the airport early all of that um but david you're a testament to how smoothly it can go 
I, I think that, that's because uh, the, the people are so nice at the airports on the whole. It's I yeah. think we're very lucky. Um, yeah. And I think if you go with it with the right attitude, because um, I, I think they probably have a difficult job and they're dealing with lots of difficult people who stress. Oh, yes. I, I think um, a lot of people who travel are a little bit on the grumpy, stressed mm, side. You I, see I, it in we, the airports. We don't have to be. That, that's the nice thing is, is we can go and have a joke with them. And it's, right. it's a nice way of doing it. Yeah. And I, I, yeah. as I say, I, I've, I think I can't remember anybody who's been unpleasant. They've been so lovely and that's helpful so nice. every time. You know, I think there's something, I don't know, when they see a base, if they, once they get past the, oh my God, what is this? I do think that they're sort of like, oh, this is interesting. And if you're nice and, mm -hmm. and you know, personable and not grumpy towards mm -hmm. them, they want to work with you, you know? Mm -hmm. And and I think that attitude that we have as the passengers can mm -hmm. help. If you walk up and you're kind of all ready for a fight, that's mm. not going to go well. But um, yeah, you know, I don't think, I mean, I've had a couple people that were, I'm going to say very um, Bostonian in demeanor, like a little bit gruff seeming. They weren't yes. mean. They weren't grumpy. There's just sometimes this Boston way of, mm. what do you call that? You know, but not, they're not being mean. It's just the way they talk. <laughs> and I can right. say it because I am a Bostonian. <laughs> So I think this is interesting and, and it's a fun topic and I think it can be helpful for people to just know, stay calm, smile, be yeah. polite yeah. <laughs> and it, it should work out, you know, so. Because they do want to help you. They, they do want you to get to your destination um, right. safely and, and look after your instrument. So it, it's, yeah. we're all on the same page. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Well, this was a good a good topic, David, I think. <laughs> Thank you, everybody, for listening to yet another episode in Season 2 of Bass Talk with Hagen and Hayes. Like and subscribe. And thank you to our sponsors, Grace Gallery. Um, there, There's a link to their website on my website, uh, gracegallerydesigns.net. And um, I hope everyone stays safe and travels well. Take care. Bye.